the bang for the buck was always expected to be felt more by the smaller companies because the multinationals can shift taxes, they can go to lower jurisdictions if they can, but you're saying very little additional benefit here. Just explain why and also how that compares to what the GOP were hoping here in terms of benefits. I guess I would put it a little bit differently. I think there are substantial benefits to multinationals from a, a shift to a territorial system which allows them to move cash around much more easily, which eliminates uh, the large deferred tax liability that they'd accumulate over time in return for the 15.5% rate. Uh, and so I do view this as generating uh, quite positive uh, effects for large multinationals, obviously also for domestic companies. What I've criticized it for is that it didn't generate as much revenue as I would expect by raising taxes on those multinationals that have been most effective at shifting profits abroad. Interesting. So one of the theoretical goals of this administration generally is to encourage more uh, domestic manufacturing of actual goods. In general, I think not just in the U.S., but there is a lot of criticism of the ease with which companies can, uh, you know, uh, recognize revenue, particularly on intangible investments in low-cost jurisdictions. Does this bill do anything to address either of those things? Less than I would have hoped and less than I would have expected. It's a complex reform, so it's, uh, it's, it's hard to say for sure what the effects will be. Uh, but what it doesn't seem to do is to encourage more manufacturing in the United States. There are a lot of provisions which seem to have the uh, opposite effect that encourage companies to ship tangible assets abroad uh, and to export intangibles from the United States. Let me just break in here with some headlines from Sarah Huckabee Sanders. She's saying that three parts of the tax bill may not comply with Senate rules, and as a result, the House may have to re-vote on the tax bill. So that triumphant moment that we got from Paul He'll Ryan. Get, Paul Ryan will get to do it again. <laughs> He'll get to do a do-over here, but pretty much it's going to happen. So this might just be more of a technicality here. Mm. Brad, can you explain that last point a little bit further in terms of the incentives it creates and why it doesn't incentivize more domestic manufacturing. Remember that uh, one of the risks always associated with something that is based on a territorial principle is that you don't pay tax on what you do abroad, uh, which on its uh, surface encourages certain uh, highly profitable activities be it uh, exploiting royalties on intellectual property or be it manufacturing high value components to move abroad. It's always been a risk. The reform changes or deviates from strict territoriality in a couple of ways. It introduces a global tax on intangible income in low tax jurisdictions. Ironically though, because of the way the tax is calculated, you can potentially lower your tax burden by shifting tangible assets to an offshore location. So rather than just having your intellectual <laughs> property in Ireland, you might want to have your manufacturing facilities in Ireland. And then there's some potentially perverse effects of providing a low tax rate on the export of intangibles. You might want to export something which you had previously produced in the US. Like so you would shift the final stage manufacturing abroad. So you're talking about a shifting of jobs potentially to another jurisdiction that has a lower tax rate ultimately. Uh, correct. And that has wow. effects on GDP, it has effects on trade deficit, trade surplus. I mean, the numbers that the president relies on to determine whether we're winning or losing might be influenced as well. Yes, I mean, and you can make an argument that it may create at the margin some incentives to return offshore profits to the U.S. to book those as intangible exports from the United States, which would reduce the measured trade deficit. But in terms of actual production in the United States, mm. unfortunately, I think this was a missed opportunity. Mm. To what extent, though, do you think companies will follow through? And bring the money? Well, they have no choice but to bring... No, but I mean in terms of what you were saying about in terms of shifting potentially the manufacturing base to a lower tax jurisdiction. Let's use Ireland because you did a 12.5% tax rate there. To what extent do you think companies, because many of them look at Ireland as, in particular as a, a low tax jurisdiction mm -hmm. here for other reasons, um, to what extent do you think actually they will look at shifting? Because there are other complications there, not only the financials. 
Well, I mean, a lot of the, yes, there are other complications at the margin. You'll probably keep your, uh, you won't do it for a percentage point. Yes. However, the by eliminating the restrictions that forced you to, as a company to hold your profits offshore uh, and not be able to repatriate them tax-free, you may in that sense make it easier to locate profits abroad. And uh, you do technically lower your tax rate uh, by shifting more of your tangible production to Ireland relative to the 20% in the U.S. Wow. And just a, a follow through on what we had told you earlier that the U.S. House may have to vote again on the tax bill to comply with Senate rules. We now hear from Sarah Huckabee Sanders that the House must revote on the tax bill tomorrow to fix the Senate rule issue. But once again, this is expected to pass. Brad, I want to home in on what you said about how we could actually see measures reduce the trade deficit, but not actually economically contribute to more production here in the U.S. It speaks to the inherent difficulty of using this measure, the trade deficit, as any sort of measuring stick. And as you point out in your recent writings, pre-tax, even right now, there's reasons to think that it's not really capturing everything that's going on. I mean, yes. So the trade deficit is almost certainly overstated uh, relative to its real size. And the income surplus, uh, the extra profit that the U.S. generates on its investment abroad relative to the profit foreign companies show in the U.S. is almost certainly overstated by an equal measure. The aggregate measure of uh, the United States external position, the current account, is probably about right. But I think it highlights the difficulty measuring bilateral balances. And with this new tax overhaul, that doesn't really change the, the way that these things are calculated because companies are able to shift strategies as well. So we may continue to get an overstating of the, the trade deficit, for instance. Uh, yes. I, the Part of the reform is meant to create some incentive right. uh, to bring some of the profits in Bermuda, profits booked in Ireland, which aren't paying 12 percent in Ireland, by the no, way. I hate They're it. complex structures <laughs> yes. that give a much lower rate. It's Apple, the EU well statutory 12 and a half. So, but it, the, the 12 and a half is not the real rate. Less than 1 percent. Well, less than 1 percent if you use a double Irish, which is under reform. Yeah. Bermuda is zero. Mm, uh, okay. The real rate that multinationals have been looking at is below 12 and a half. So there, there are some efforts to make it more attractive to book what is now booked as an offshore profit in the U.S., which could raise measured exports without impacting real activity. Very quickly, do you think this is a mistake? As yes. in, do you think they re realized actually the sort of perverse impact that they were creating here? I mean, clearly it was done very quickly. We know other things have sort of come out in the wash that perhaps they hadn't realized they were doing at the time when they were writing this. Do you think they recognized and, and made a compromise? No, I think this was uh, a conscious uh, choice. Yeah. I think there were constraints yeah. uh, that, uh, you know, uh, there was a desire not to have a major increase in the amount of tax that some companies which were using offshore strategies were currently paying. And so therefore, you couldn't do what I think should have been done, which is to try to really broaden the base yeah. and capture a lot more income from tax-shifting multinationals. And that's the key.